Welcome back to a new episode where we are going to create a full parallax background image with content on top of it. If we look at the website that we are going to create, you can see what a parallax image actually is. If we scroll down, you can see that the background is, well, fixed because it can't move. And this gives a pretty cool effect. And whenever we use a fixed background image, the image will remain static while the content will move over the image as we scroll down the page. So you can see that the text will go up and the image will stay in place. The reason why I like to create websites with parallax images is because it's well, a pretty awesome way to present your product. It gives a modern look to your website as well. Now before we start, we actually need a background image. And once again, I recommend you to use Pixabay for pictures if you don't have your own. The pictures on Pixabay are free and you can use them on your actual portfolio as well. So let's go to the browser, let's write down pixabay.com and since I want to focus on a personal portfolio, let's write down business, hit enter. Now I like to create darker websites, so I will be looking for a dark image and if I scroll down, I can actually find the picture that I have on my website right now, which is this one. And feel free to use another image because the process of creating a website is the same even though if you use another picture. So let's click on it. Let's click on free download and the size is 1920 28 12 1280. Let's click on download. Well, I'm not a robot. Let's click on the traffic lights. Let's click on download again. Well, this is the same process in the, as in the previous episode. Let's click on our folder, our root folder. Let's go inside image. Now let's place our image right here. And you can see that whenever you download images from Pixabay, they come with a pretty difficult name. So let's change the name to IMG hyphen background, so BG. Let's go back to our code editor and let's start creating our parallax background image. The first thing that we need to do is to go to our index.html and well, right above our closing body, we need to create a div with an ID. So let's write down div, hashtag, and the ID name is container hyphen BG. So let's hit tab and you can see that our div is created. And inside the div, we want to create another div called a wrapper. So let's write down div punctuation mark content hyphen wrapper. Let's hit tab and let's hit enter again. And we don't want to create an image element right here because we want to use CSS and add an image to the content BG. So for now, we're well pretty much done right here. So let's go to our style sheet. And right below active, let's create a comment and let's say image landing page because we are creating a new section right now. First off, let's start off by styling the ID. So let's say hashtag container hyphen BG and we want to give it a background image and that can be done by writing down background, colon, URL and we need opening and closing parentheses and a semicolon. Inside our URL parentheses, we need to write down the path of our image. And you can use either single quotes or no quotes. It really doesn't matter. And the path is IMG, which is the folder, forward slash, and the name of the image is IMG hyphen BG, punctuation mark, JPEG. After the parentheses, we need to write down no hyphen repeat. And this is mainly if you have a small picture on a super big screen, the image will not be repeated, but will be scaled to the right size. After the no repeat, we need to hit space. We need to write down center space center because we want the main point to be in the center. And well, later on, you will understand when you, what I mean if we work on mobile phones as well. And we also want it to be fixed. On the line below, we want to say that the background size needs to be full cover. So let's write down cover. Well, I made a typo. In order for the parallax effect to work, 
we need to write down background hyphen attachment and we want the value to be fixed and we also want to set the image width and the height to 100 percent because we want it to be full screen so let's save it let's go back to our browser refresh it and this is what we want but well you can see that we are well unable to scroll down so let's go back to our index.html and right below our div box of content bg let's create another div and let's give it an id of test because we want to set the height well below the image a little bit higher so we can scroll so let's save it let's go to our style sheet let's write down hashtag test and let's set the height equal to 1000 pixels. Save it, refresh it. And right now we created our parallax effect and it was well pretty easy to do it. What I want to do right now is to add some content in front of the background image. So let's go back to our index.html again. Inside our div class of content, content wrapper, we want to create an h1, my personal portfolio. And you can add whatever you want. I actually don't have any content, so therefore I'm just writing some dummy text. We want to add a paragraph and with the best web developer in town. And we also want to create a link. So let's create an href and let's set the text in between to contact and the href to contact.html as well. The main goal of a personal portfolio is, is to attract potential clients. So you always want to lead uh, your clients or the visitors of your website to the contact form. So let's go back to the style sheet so we can style it. And right below our test, we want to start styling the class. So it's punctuation mark content hyphen wrapper. And as you can see that the background image, so our ID is full width. But what we want is our content to, well, not be the 100%. And the way you can do that is by saying margin, it's zero and auto. So you're saying that the top and bottom is zero and the left and right is auto. And let me set the width equal to 80% so I can show you what I actually mean. And let's set the text align to the center as well. Save it, refresh the browser. And if we inspect our element and let's hover on content wrapper you can see that what well margin zero auto does is it takes the 80% out of 100. So we got 20% left. And with auto, you're saying split the 20% to the left and the right. So 10% to the right, 10% to the left. Now you can also see that our content is well at the top. So let's go back. Let's set the position equal to relative. And let's set the top equal to 30%. Save it, refresh it, and it's in the middle. Well, right now, we need to style our H1 paragraph and answer. And what I usually like to do is to use all my global style elements close to each other. So at the top, we have our HTML body header. And right below that, I want to create an H1, where I want to set the font size equal to 68 pixels. I want to set the color color to white, so FFF, FFF. And I also want to add a text shadow, so text hyphen shadow, so it pops up a little bit more. And let's set the text shadow equal to two pixels, two pixels. And the color is, well, not white because, well, let's set it equal to white so I can show you what I mean. Let's save it, refresh it. And well, it looks pretty weird on the background if I zoom in, but if we set it equal to well, let's say gray, so 666, 666, save it, refresh it. This looks, well, way better. And well, you can see that there is a lot of margin around our, my personal portfolio H1. So let's set the margin equal to zero. We can also style our paragraph right here, but we will be using a paragraph a lot and I don't want to give it a global color of white. So I only want to add a global styling and I want to set the font size equal to 20 pixels. Save it, refresh the browser. Now let's go back to the bottom of our style sheet. And let's copy our content wrapper actually. Let's remove everything in between. 
and let's add a paragraph after the content wrapper. So I only want to style the paragraph in the content wrapper class. I want the text transform, so all the letters need to be uppercase. I want to set the color to white, and I want a margin of 20 pixels top, zero right, 60 pixels bottom, and 60 and zero, excuse me, to the left. So let's save it, refresh it, and this actually starts to look pretty good. Now the last thing that I want to style is our content link. So let's go back to the style sheet. And once again, we can copy our content wrapper paragraph. And let's change the P to A. Let's delete everything inside of it. And let's set the color equal to FFFFFF. We want the underscore to be gone. So text decoration is equal to zero. We want the text transform to be uppercase as well. We want the border, well, not only below, but we want one pixel solid all around, so white. We want a padding. Inside our border, we want eight pixels top bottom and 16 pixels left right. And let's set the font size equal to 22 pixels. So let's save it, refresh the browser, and the text decoration is actually not, oh, it's zero, so it needs to be none. So let's save it. Let's go back to the browser. Let's refresh it. And this is the output that we want. And if we scroll down, you can see that the text is going up and the background image is static. This was it for this episode. And in the next episode, I want to introduce you to Font Awesome icon so we could add a scroll down button at the bottom of our page that will scroll down for us whenever we click on it. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.